and welcome to Community Matters today with Reg Baker. I'll be your host. Uh, normally, I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker that broadcasts every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, but this is a special broadcast uh, that I'm hosting uh, to announce the 40 Under 40 event that the Pacific Business News does every year uh, for this Friday. Uh, we've got two of the award winners or class members, uh, as I think they like to be called, uh, of that 40 Under 40 event uh, here today. And they're going to talk a little bit about the event itself, how they got into it, and then also about themselves and their businesses that, that was the platform that uh, got them the award. So I'd like to welcome uh, Saban and Jessica to the show today. Uh, welcome to Community Matters. Uh, this is uh, actually a pretty neat event uh, that comes up. They do it every year. The Pacific Business News uh, has really branded this, and it's become a very strong brand over the years. Uh, and you're the most recent class for 2017 as uh, you know, class members of, of 40 Under 40. So, you know, Jessica, maybe you can explain a little bit to us, uh, you know, what. 40 Under 40 is and, and how you got connected with them. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I'm Jessica Munoz. I'm the president and founder of Ho'ola Napua, which means new life for our children. I'm also a full-time practicing nurse practitioner at Polymomi Medical Center in the emergency room. Um, and so I was introduced to PBN's 40 Under 40 because um, someone, Amanda Ellis, from the um, uh, East West Center mm -hmm. actually nominated uh, me for consideration to be one so of the So it requires a nomination. Somebody has yes. to nominate you. Yes. So um, I think the focus is on finding young individuals who are taking leadership roles um, within the community, whether it's in the nonprofit or for profit sector. Um, and who are having impact around issues and business needs. Right, so these are the state. potential movers and shakers uh, of the future. Absolutely. All right, super. Sabin, how, um, how has your experience been with the 40 Under 40? Um, the experience has been really good. Uh, you know, I've, I was introduced to the 40 Under 40 platform uh, by a friend of mine, Chuck Harris, who actually uh, wrote up the nomination for myself, uh, and it was uh, it was interesting because him and I went back and forth. I was like, I was like, ah, you know, I don't think I fit the bill. Uh, but he was he was nice enough to submit the nomination, and uh, you know, it's great great to be a part of uh, you know some pretty esteemed folks that that were part of this. It is, uh, is class. a pretty good so group of people. It, it was. It was. And so. It's a competitive process too. I mean, it's not like you just get nominated and you get it. There's actually a grading and judging process you have to go through. Yeah, and I don't remember the exact number of applications this year, but I think it was somewhere around 200. Wow. So, so out of 200, 40 were selected. Mm -hmm. You know, that's uh, it, it's a pretty good accomplishment to get that pat on the back. Absolutely. All right. Now, you know, in this event is going to happen on Friday. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, what's what the timing of it is and, and how people can sign up? I guess the PBN has a website so that you can go there and, and register, but I've also heard that it's sold out. Yes, I heard the same thing. I know it starts at 3 o'clock um, out at Koalina at the Four Seasons. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I think it, the event itself is from 3 to 8, um, and so mm -hmm. I'm not sure if there are seats available. Yeah, well, if it's sold out, I am guess it would be kind of tough to get in. You'd have to be sneaky. <laughs> but, you know, but, um, but, Saban, have you been to one of these before? I mean, how does wh how does it work? I, I was at the event last year. A friend of mine was nominated. Um, it was a great event. Uh, it was a different location, but, uh, you know, you've got a lot of family members. you got a lot of friends uh, there to support uh, the nominees, and I, I thought it was very well run. Uh, PBM was very well organized uh, for the event. Um, you, you know, you get to you get to meet a lot of different folks from different business sectors, uh, whether it's a, a private business, nonprofit, uh, and then you you, you broaden your horizon, uh, you know, pretty substantially mm -hmm. being around folks like that, and it's, it's it's very impressive. It's a pretty enthusiastic group too. I I've been to some of them in the past that were at night at the convention center, and uh, you know they can party pretty hardy, you know, <laughs> and they, get, they really enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a little different. This is going to be in the afternoon uh, hours. Mm -hmm. So have, was that the way it was last year? Uh, it wasn't last year. It was uh, probably started about 5, 6 o'clock. I think mm -hmm. this year being on the, on the western side with the traffic, I think it made sense a little bit to earlier, start a little yeah. earlier. So. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be a great event. It's a great location. Well, there should be a few hundred people there, I would imagine, if it's a sold-out event. Mm -hmm. That, that's going to be good. 
Um, and I guess the 40, are they all recognized as a group? I guess they're a class of 40. Um, but each one gets to go up on stage and get a little recognition, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I just, I don't think there's any speaking. No, Let's hope there is. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you know you were giving a speech? <laughs> well, maybe uh, instead of Friday, you can do it today. <laughs> <laughs> But let's um, let's shift gears before, uh, for a second. You know, Jessica, we talked a little bit about your organization, but we didn't go into a lot of mm -hmm. details. They did throw up a, a flash of your website, mm -hmm. you know, which I didn't refer to because we kind of moved kind of quickly. Uh, but there is a website that you have that people can find out more information. Yeah. So our website is www.hoolanapua.org. Um, you can also Google search us um, mm -hmm. and you will find us. All right. um, but our focus is working with underage girls who've been sexually trafficked or sexually exploited, mm -hmm. which most people don't realize is happening in our community and it's not an easy issue to talk about. Um, but it's, it's happening and it's local kids. It's not kids from Thailand and Cambodia and India like we mm -hmm. want to think about, mm -hmm. but it's actual local Hawaii children from a variety of socioeconomic backgrounds, and um, you know it doesn't just affect one individual group. It can be anyone, being young, being female, being vulnerable. Um, and so I got into this work. I'm like I said, my day job, um, my paid day job is um, I'm a nurse practitioner. And years ago, I started seeing girls coming into our emergency rooms, being brought in for care, and mm -hmm. we weren't screening and identifying the fact that they were being sex trafficked or sexually exploited. And so that kind of ignited in me this passion for justice and mm -hmm. this passion to um, start an organization that focuses on the health, education, advocacy, and reintegration of girls between the ages of 11 and 18 who've been sex trafficked. Is it a facility that they can go to and get these services or you know, so, a, a yeah. safe right. area? Right, absolutely. So we have several programs um, underway. We have a mentoring program where we work with girls who've been identified, whether it's by family court or social service or law enforcement. Um, so we have a mentoring program mm -hmm. that works with them now. We have a family support group and family support services but one of the big programs that we're working on um, um, getting developed is we actually have a piece of property with an existing structure and we're starting Hawaii's first long-term residential treatment campus called Pearl Haven, uh, specific for this population of underage girls. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a year-long residential program. One of the biggest needs for kids who've been trafficked is intensive therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times this needs to take place in a residential program. And in Hawaii right now, we don't have anything like this um, specific to sexually exploited girls. Mm -hmm. So we are starting this campus. Now, I, and I'll beg for your forgiveness on this, but it, there was a show on Hawaii Five-0 that mm -hmm. highlighted this issue. Mm -hmm. Is this the organization that they were referring to, or was that something um, different? It, it is the organization they were referring to. We had the opportunity of meeting with the executive producers at the end of last mm -hmm. year, and just shared with them the issue um, and the need to expose what it looks like in Hawaii. and. Mm -hmm. They loved the idea of not just doing PSAs, the actors mm -hmm, were gracious mm -hmm. enough to do PSAs, but they actually wanted to do a whole episode, and then subsequently wanted to do a finale episode that highlighted the which issue. Which they did. Yeah. yeah, which is amazing because, I mean, that show had about 8.9 million viewers. So it's really getting the word so out. It's, mm. Yes, which is the most important thing, is shining the light in the darkness. That's because right. we can't do something as a community about this issue unless people are aware that it's Absolutely. even happening. Well, and, and aware of how serious it is. And that it can be anyone's child. Mm -hmm. That it's not just kids from low-income families, but it can be kids that go to private school. Is it fair to say that this is a, a, a crime of opportunity? I mean, it doesn't matter who you are or what you're doing. If, if they see an opportunity to snatch you, if you will, mm -hmm. they will. Oh, absolutely. It's big money. I mean, the only reason why trafficking exists in Hawaii is because people are making money off of it. Um, those who buy mm -hmm. and those who sell, mm -hmm. and you have the child in the middle. And what's sad mm -hmm. is that um, because of that, the demand, unless we start attacking the demand, then mm -hmm. this will continue. Um, and, you know, 
girls have shared that you know their customers can come from a variety of backgrounds wow. and these pimps it's not just snatch and grab and kidnapping but more often it's a friend request on Facebook or a mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. platform and they still they're getting pretty it. smooth in how yeah. they go out and absolutely. trick people yeah. absolutely well let's um let's come back and revisit this topic a little bit um, I'm sorry to say it's a little depressing but at least we're doing something that's about right. it and that's, that's a positive uh, Savin, t tell us something real positive. What's going on on your side? What are you doing? So, I mean, it's a, it's a large contrast to what Jessica does. Uh, we're obviously a private business. We're a contract furniture dealer. Um, just a little little bit of tidbit and background. You know, I was, um, I didn't grow up to want to be in this uh, industry. Uh, I was actually in the Navy uh, from the time that I was uh, 17 years old. And, you know, I spent the majority of my time on submarines uh, when I was in the Navy, so a lot of time underwater. Um, and so when I left the service, uh, I got into this industry of furniture, interior design, space planning. Uh, and it really grew on me, and I, I grew a passion for it. Um, along the way, I ended up starting my own business. Actually, I guess space planning is particularly important in a submarine environment, isn't it? It is. So it you is. got some Very early experience at, at making the most out of the space that you have to work right. with. Right. Very good. And you are predominantly a Hawaii-based business. We are a Hawaii-based business. Uh, we, uh, y you know, we're looking at um, implementing an expansion strategy by the end of this year uh, uh, throughout uh, a few bigger submarkets throughout the mainland. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that, um, and we're we're doing some different things here locally. Uh, as far as residential and working with uh, developers on micro units mm. um, and trying to be a pr uh, essentially we're, we want to help with some of the housing issues the homeless um, the, the yeah. homeless issue and also uh, you know with the amount of uh, affordable housing um, that's required uh, you know we started working with developers on a different model of our business which is very exciting um, uh, for us right now so very good and this is something that I would expect would be needed in a lot of different cities uh, all across the country yeah, you know, the industry as a whole, uh, interiors, you know, it's rapidly changing with technology implementation, with, uh, you know, real estate compression. Uh, it's, 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 it's a huge need, uh, not just here, but uh, in a lot of different places. Are you taking advantage of the fact that you're a veteran and working with the SBI, SBA and veteran-owned business opportunities? Um, I wouldn't say taking advantage. I, you know, we, we've had some opportunities where, where there may be some set-aside contracts or, or something that would favor us. Uh, we haven't really done that much federal government work. Uh, we've done a fair amount of state work. Uh, mainly it's been a lot of private businesses. Uh, we've done a lot with nonprofits, uh, which, which has been really exciting to be able to work directly with nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Well, and that might be something that we follow up on uh, later is it, you know, one of my hats that I wear is uh, working with the SBA and I'm on our National Board of Directors. Um, and there are opportunities, if you're talking about expansion, there are ways that the SBA can help you with sure. that. You know, and it doesn't have to necessarily just be federal contract. Mm -hmm. So, but we've reached a point where we need to, to take a short break. Um, but this is Reg Baker. I'm hosting Community Matters uh, today. Uh, we're talking a little bit about the Pacific Business News 40 Under 40 event that's coming up, and we've got two of the uh, members of that class here today. Uh, we'll be right back in about 60 seconds. For every game day, assign a designated driver. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you could touch the flag, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself to you, can fly instead. Aloha and welcome back to Community Matters. Uh, today we're talking with the Pacific Business News 40 Under 40 
class of 2017. We've got two of the members here. It's an event that's going to be taking place this Friday out at the Four Seasons in Coalina. Uh, I believe it starts at about 3 o'clock, but if you haven't signed up for it, it's too late. It's sold out. This is one of the more popular events uh, that the PBN does every year, uh, and we're very fortunate to have two of those class members here today. Uh, Jessica and Simon, welcome back. Uh, glad to have you here today. So you're both going to be at this event. I guess we're going to have a, a sold out. There's going to be a lot of activity over there. Um, how do you see this impacting what you're currently doing? I mean, how, how does this benefit you? Why would somebody want to be named as a, a 40 under 40 member? Jessica? Um, I think it gives you a platform um, to be able to share your message no matter what that message is. It'd be a powerful Ab platform. Absolutely. You, know, you absolutely. get a lot of visibility from this. Absolutely. And because, you know, being in the nonprofit sector um, as my non-paid other full-time job, um, it is really important um, from a community standpoint for those to understand our message, the work that we do, um, and also, you know, for we're always saying we're recruiting three things, time, talent, and treasure. Mm -hmm. um, and so... For us, it's really important to get the message out there um, that this is happening. But I also think that it also gives an opportunity to share that, you know, nonprofit work needs to be looked at in the same light of running a business. Well, because, it is. It right, is running a business. It is. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes it gets, oh, this is nonprofit work. This is, mm -hmm. you know, for-profit work when we're providing a service, a much-needed mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And so I think shifting that mindset. And so I love that. PBN's 40 Under 40 includes both of the, you know, nonprofit mm -hmm. and for-profit. Yeah. Well, it's good to have that balance. Yeah. Salmon, how do you see it? Now, you're a slightly different perspective, uh, more from a commercial standpoint, but uh, how do you see the benefits of this? Yeah, it, it's certainly a, um, a huge platform. Uh, you know, it, it does, um, I, I like to think of it less about myself and, and more about our business and more about our industry. Uh, it also gives you access uh, to people, again, that, that you wouldn't normally get a chance to meet. Um, you know, people that have done very well in business, you know, whether it is a, a nonprofit or it's a private business. Uh, you know, you, you're, what I like about being around people like that, that are very talented, is that it, it, it'll expand your horizon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's going to make you think a little harder. It's going to make you... Um, you know, work a little harder, and, and so, and that's that's kind of the true benefits that I see. And I think from the outside, somebody looking from the outside in, um, you know, it, 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 I'm hoping that it helps motivate them a little more as well uh, to be a part of something like this. Well, you know, from what I've heard, I, I've had conversations with Emily Klein over at the PBN, who's the director of events, uh, and she's told me that once these classes come together, the class 2017 this year, but the previous classes tend to stick around mm -hmm. and do projects and work together and, and do things as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, so the benefits can actually extend for years. I mean, there, there's a, a good group to stay affiliated with. And I guess there's a, a good network to develop because there's a lot of people in there that have, I guess, thoughts and advice and perspectives to share. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, I was hoping actually to have one of those uh, previous award winners here to give us a little bit of a historical perspective on things, um, you know, and I'm sure some of them will be showing up at the event on Friday. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are you um, planning on having any family participation? Are you going to bring the family and the, 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 the group out to this event with you? Yes, uh, my husband will be there, <laughs> but also we have several of our team members from Hola Lenapua. So how many team members do you have with your organization? So we have a ton of volunteers, uh -huh. and what I call core volunteers who work at this daily. Um, but we have four full-time staff members now, wow. um, which is new. So just in the last two years, we finally started hiring staff. Everything has just been 100% pro bono up until this point. Um, and so we have four full-time. I think we have about six or seven in contracted part-time positions. Yeah. You know, and I applaud the individuals, the volunteers and the paid staff, because to me, this is a tough job. Mm -hmm. because it's heartbreaking to see some of the things that are going on uh, and to have to work. I know it's rewarding because you're helping, but it's also, I guess, challenging because there's such a, a history. It's challenging both because the topic is traumatizing, the kids are traumatized, but also the system as a whole 
has so many flaws. And mm. so when you're working with within like a social service sector, and I'm not a social worker, mm. so this has been a trial by fire, um, it, you really have to learn a whole new language. And sometimes when things have been done a certain way for years, um, bringing in a new perspective can be difficult mm -hmm. and challenging and shifting that. Um, but the response um, to this population of children historically has not worked. And so we need to adjust and fine tune so that we're permanently removing these kids from these situations mm. and setting them up on successful life paths. Because these are the future PBNs 40 under 40. Mm -hmm. These are the mm -hmm. future doctors, mm -hmm. lawyers, um, politicians. But they need to be given a voice. And um, everything we do is about empowerment of those who survive and um, giving them that ability to have the life that they dreamed of as a little girl um, mm -hmm. because those dreams were stolen and that innocence was robbed. And so restoring that and bringing that back um, is challenging. And it's yeah. challenging to get a community to gather around its most vulnerable. This is by far the most marginalized vulnerable population mm -hmm. in our community. And it's not one individual, it's not Holonapua, it's not one state entity that's going to solve the problem, but it truly is the collective whole. It is. Because yeah. you have to have the community behind the work and behind the need for the services and the prevention of it. Well, exactly. To identify the problem, take some action to correct it, and then help repair the damage mm -hmm. that was done. Absolutely. I mean, it takes a, a community to work mm -hmm. together on that. Now, Savin, I, I know this is hard to follow sometimes, you know, um, you know but. You know, you've had some challenges in your business as well. I mean, it's, uh, you know, funding and finding good mm -hmm. staff uh, are, you know, always challenges. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you've experienced? Oh, how much time do we have? Really? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, business is challenging. It's just the reality. If you decide to go into business yourself, I mean, you, you have to really understand that. Um, you know, you know, when I first started the business, uh, you know, there was a couple couple of thoughts in my mind. Uh, the first one was, you know, you always have to know why you're doing something. Um, the second part was, uh, you know, when you make make a decision, you have to stick with it. Um, you know, for good or good or bad, uh, you know, you got to deal with the outcome. Uh, and, and I think the third and probably the more important one from a direct business side is, you know, you've got to have a path to market uh, with whatever it is that, that you're going to be doing. Um, and, and along the way, uh, you know, you're going to stumble. Uh, you're going to take, uh, you know, you're going to take 10 steps forward and all of a sudden it's 100 steps back uh, for one reason or another. Uh, but I think as long as you have the wit about you and, and you continue to fight through some of the issues and um, you try to learn from it, uh, you know, that's, that's the most that you can ask for yourself. Uh, and, and I think the other part is, you know, surround yourself with good people, um, you know, people uh, that, are, that think differently than you, that are smarter than you, uh, that challenge you. Uh, you know, to the point where, where they're annoying you, uh, which is which is a good thing, and, and those are the people that I try to try to be around. We kind of joke a little bit about it, but if you have or hire people that are always agreeing with you, the yes types, then one of you are redundant. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't need two of you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you need to be challenged, and, and you need to, you know, be able to, to, to step back and rethink. You know, but you know I, what I'm hearing is that you know some of the challenges are similar for both of you. Although you may not have, you know, Jessica, you may not have the same challenge of trying to find the customers or the people that need your services. Um, as a matter of fact, your goal is to eliminate them mm -hmm. you know, and and have no more need for that. Mm -hmm. um, but still, you know, you you need to find those that need the help, and you need to reach out, and you got to figure out where your customers are, and uh, you need to find the funding to help yeah. deliver the services, and you need to, the staff, qualified staff, to both work with you to achieve your objectives. So there's there's a lot of similarities, a lot of overlap, at least in the infrastructure of delivering the product or the service, you know, whether it be commercial or nonprofit, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's I guess refreshing to see that the PBN recognizes that and recognizes both groups mm -hmm. as successful 40 under 40 members. Mm -hmm. So, the, um, yeah, any, any other bits of advice or thoughts that you'd like to share with the audience before we wrap up today? Um, I think one thing I would like to encourage um, the audience today is to 
just look around and see how you can get involved in the community. You know, if you don't have something that's close to your heart, find it because the needs are great. And um, there are several young leaders um, within the nonprofit world that are looking to be mentored and are looking for those even in the private sector to come alongside of them and, and mentor them um, because you know, I never intended to start a nonprofit. I knew nothing about nonprofits, to be honest. Um, and so I've learned a lot, um, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I always appreciate um, those with words of advice and wisdom um, coming alongside of me, um, especially in, in growing something from literally starting with one other person in my living room to a full organization mm -hmm. has been, it's been a journey. Well, and it's because of that energy and that vision mm -hmm. and that desire to do something is why you're one of the 40 under 40. <laughs> uh, Saban, how about you? Any uh, final words or thoughts? Yeah, I, you know, what I've learned probably just in the last year of working with actually a lot of nonprofits like Jessica's is, um, you know, you've, you've got to be in business aside from just making money. Uh, you've got to you've got to figure out what is important to you as an organization. Uh, for me personally, uh, whoever the owner is, um, and and you've got to focus on it, and you've got to give back to the community. Um, you know, working with the nonprofits that we did the last uh, last year, uh, it was amazing because we you know the relationships that we built and and the work that we continue to do together. Uh, you know, us supporting them and vice versa. It's it's just been phenomenal. You know, a great example was last last week, Aloha United Way had a dunk booth set up uh, next to our office, you know, and guess what, you know, we, uh, you know, the employees had a great time, a friend of mine had a great time, you know, th throwing the balls, and, and I, got get dunked. I got dunked a few <laughs> times, so <laughs> I think it was seven total, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's impactful for the community, community when you get involved, um, and, and I think you have, you, you, it should definitely not be just about making money. Well, I guess what I'm hearing is that we're, we're all encouraging people to get engaged. You know, find something that you're passionate about, get engaged uh, to help yourself and the community. Well, that's a, a nice theme to, to close on. We're going to wrap up. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, and congratulations on your uh, acceptance into the, the class of 2017 for 40 Under 40. And, and thank you to the PBN for hosting and sponsoring this event every year. So this is Community Matters. Uh, I'm Reg Baker, I'm hosting today, and we had a, a good conversation uh, highlighting the PBN event that's gonna be on Friday, uh, 40 Under 40. So I'll be seeing you soon, if not Thursday at two o'clock from two to 2.30, Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We'll see you soon, aloha.